time we're here at Devox Poland with a speaker who almost needs no introduction. It is of course Ben Pat Subramanian. Thank you very much for joining us, Ben Pat. Pleasure, it's been a lot of fun being here. Have you enjoyed the conference? Oh, totally, absolutely. What have you noticed any kind of recurrent themes or interesting trending things that you picked up on? Well, you know, I, uh, this is my fifth time speaking at this uh, conference here in Poland. Developers here are always passionate, very eager to learn, very interactive, you know, right after the sessions, you know, I spend a lot of time answering questions, discussing things. So that trend of the passion definitely continues. A lot of excitement around Java 8, a lot of excitement about functional programming, uh, you know, things that we normally encounter. How do we improve what we do? How do we get better as software developers? Absolutely. We had really good discussions yesterday and today, and, and absolutely, uh, that seems to be uh, continuing. I think what's interesting with Java 8 as well is that people are kind of, the more they use it, they're actually discovering things that they weren't maybe expecting, or there's kind of new difficulties emerging. Things like parallel streams is becoming something that more and more people are mentioning. Right. Well, with, with Java 8, uh, it's, it's a very small syntactical difference. It's a huge semantical change. So developers are getting their heads around what does it mean to be programming with lambdas and quickly they're realizing it's a lot more than putting an error around uh, parameters, right? And, and so um, they're beginning to learn about the real power, you know, getting a grasp of what laziness is or how do you deal with function composition, how do you break your code and how do you start thinking in a functional style. A lot of us have been programming imperatively for decades now and, and trying to make us think differently is requiring a lot of effort. And I think the paradigm shift is the most difficult and the challenging part, but it's also the most exciting part as well in Java 8. Right. I think I've noticed that a lot of people are kind of maybe more exploring, now that they've jumped to functional, people are exploring other concepts as well. There definitely seems to be a lot more openness. I know Scala's enjoyed a bit of a surge in popularity, at least in searches in the last year. Right. And you can't help but wonder if that's off the back of that kind of, oh, I've broken out of this paradigm, what else can I do? Yeah. Well, Java 8 couldn't have come at a better time, in my opinion. I was very lukewarm about Java 8 in the beginning, with, without before knowing what it actually was. And once I looked at what it did, uh, it, it's phenomenal. It, it didn't just extend the life of Java as a language itself. It has really revolutionized the adoption of functional programming on the platform. Before this, you have you had the haves and have-nots, right? You had you know folks programming in languages like Scala, Groovy, Clojure. They could do functional style. Java programmers couldn't. Well, it said that it reset the you know uh, playing field. Everybody has an opportunity at functional programming now, and and as a result, it's a ripe moment for raising the bar. You know, learning about functional style. So absolutely, the saying that with with rising tide all boats uh, you know uh, get lifted. That's basically what's happening as well. So overall, I think that's a really positive thing. So it's only two decades old, right? You know, there's still plenty of time for evolution. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the beauties of you know what we do in our field is we we have this wonderful opportunity of uh, learning and relearning. I, I often say being a programmer is like being a kid in a candy store every <laughs> single day, right? You, you, you're you like, whoa, look what I could do, look what I can learn. And and to me, uh, it's, it's almost like a, it's a profession uh, which is ageless in my opinion. You could be, uh, you know, 18 years old uh, and be excited as programming as you are 75 years old, I think. So to me, that that's really awesome. Yes, this is that creativity, isn't there? And that's kind of that unlocking new ways of thinking, which is kind of what you were talking about yesterday in your session. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so I gave two talks yesterday. One, uh, one is on lazy evaluations. And, and to me, lazy evaluation is really the, the core of functional programming. Sure, we talk about immutability, we talk about function composition, but all of those really lead toward the ability to do lazy evaluation. Uh, functional programming, the way I look at it is, uh, you know, polymorphism is to opt into programming like laziness is to functional programming. It's a very, very powerful concept. But, but then I talked about, in my keynote, I talked about, uh, you know, trying to not focus on syntax, but to focus on the semantics. We often get really, well, syntax is the first thing we encounter, right? But, but that often intimidates us. We get, you know, really put off by the syntax. But oftentimes that's because our mind is really tuned to words uh, learning from what we know already. And, and because we are familiar with a certain syntax, anything that's different from what we are familiar with really becomes uh, hard for us. But once we put that past or get by, past that, when you start focusing on semantics, that's where the real power is. You mentioned about parallel streams a few minutes ago. Well, that, that's a beauty, right? When you look at a code for a stream, you don't look at its laziness. It's something you have to see between the lines. 
and, and that's really the semantical aspects of things. So, so syntax can get us you know, a part way, but the semantics is the most important thing. And then once we understand the semantics, it becomes a lot more easier to not only uh, work with the language, but also have a pretty good uh, understanding of the reasoning for what a language does, why it does a certain things a certain way. So it's pretty amazing to really get to that point where we begin to appreciate the semantics rather than being burned by the syntax. So if a developer kind of hearing this, it's like, I'd like to kind of start thinking that. Do you have any tips? Because obviously once you kind of, as you say, got buried and pulled down in everything that you're doing, how do you actually step back and kind of get to that point where actually you can go and break down the basics? Yes, I think the, the key is to, uh, you know, when, when you start looking at things, uh, you know, remind yourselves that your mind is going to reject it to begin with because you're not familiar with it. Uh, we, we really have to deal with our human nature, and our human nature is to reject things we're not familiar with, but, but as intellects, we also need to know that our mind is playing this trick, and then kind of coach ourselves to say, all right, this looks strange to me, but I'm not going to be intimidated by it, but I really want to understand what does it really do. One of the sayings is, you always have to learn one level below the level of abstraction you're working with. So, so that's one of the reasons why you say, well, I'm calling a lambda here, I'm calling a stream here, but I'm curious, what does it look like at the bytecode level? So you open up Java P, for example, take a look at the bytecode and say, what does this lambda really translate to? And, and getting a little understanding, a level below the abstraction, knowing that these things are implemented using Invoke Dynamic, for example, knowing that these things are lazy evaluation, and, and that gives you a bit of a confidence to know that you understand the meaning of things, even though the syntax may be a little you know, unsettling in the beginning, that really accelerates the process of adoption because the curiosity holds you in, even though the unfamiliarity would try to threaten and drive you away. But so don't be intimidated, be an explorer. Absolutely, that, that's a way to put it, <laughs> yeah. And um, I know we talked about kind of overarching things in the language as so well. Are, are you kind of looking at things that are happening in the ecosystem like Docker? I think is a massive thing for developers, Java developers picking up on that. Right. So there's enormous amount of things that are happening in the ecosystem uh, to, to extend quite an explosion of things, right? Uh, we got excitement about microservices on one hand, the reactive programming on the other hand. So a lot of stuff, deployment, DevOps. So turn every direction, there is innovation happening right now. It's a very exciting time to be programming in this area. But, but that's kind of what the challenge also, because as a developer, a lot is expected out of you. So in a way, it's, it's important to you know, learn a little bit about everything, so you kind of know what these things are, and then start focusing on A, what you're passionate about, and more important, what's relevant to projects on hand. You know, just because there's microservices doesn't mean everybody has to do microservices. Right, I mean, it's sometimes the monolith if, if it works for you. Exactly, right? But, but we have to really say, I'm not making a decision based on ignorance, I'm making a decision based on my business needs. There's a huge difference between the two, right? Uh, not doing something that should be done is not a good thing. But doing something because it's out there, even though I don't understand it, is more dangerous. So I think it's, uh, it's important to know what these things are, learn about these, and that's one of the reasons why coming to conferences like this is really exciting, because you may not have the time and energy to go through all of them, but you really get a very quick sample of what are the things, and, and then you can pick and choose things you want to dive into, and then you have in-depth talks for that. So that's one of the beauties of being in conferences like this, like DevOps, for example, is you come in, you get a breadth of the knowledge, and you get to have the depth of the knowledge in select areas that you are interested. So that's absolutely wonderful for uh, programmers to come to speed very quickly. Oh, that's fantastic, and that's a great motivation for coming to DevOps. So thank you for that, Blake. <laughs> absolutely, thanks for having and, uh, me. And thank you very much, and hope to yeah. see you at a Vox Day soon. Cheers.